Hello everyone. Uh, if you feel like you are overpaying in taxes, uh, what I'm going to do in this video is give you 10 tips to slash your tax bill right now. Stick around, you're gonna love this. Welcome to All About Others, where you can learn financial tips, tricks, and loopholes from holistic financial planners like myself. Hi, my name is James Laster, Master of Education and Master Financial Planner of Laster Financial Consultants. If the content you see is valuable and you want to support this channel, click the subscribe button and remember that though it may be hard, proper planning makes execution easier. Okay, to understand how to slash your tax bill, we have to talk really briefly about the difference between tax preparation and tax planning. Tax preparation is basically when you get your W-2s, your 1099s, or whatever forms you're filing to show your earned income for the year. When you're uploading those forms and you're sending them to you know your tax preparer or something, uh, they are literally preparing your taxes, right? They are looking at all your numbers, they're putting them inside their software, their system, whatever, and they're basically doing one main thing. They are reporting your financial history from the previous year to the IRS to tell them how much your taxes are or how much they need to refund you. That's it. It's simply tax prep, uh, I mean, tax preparation, that's what that's doing. Tax planning, is thinking about not only your history, but right now and what it looks like moving forward, how much are you going to be paying in taxes and ways to minimize your taxes. So with that being said, let's get talk about 10 tips right now to slash your tax bill right now. All right, what we wanna do is talk about these 10 tips to cut your tax bill, 10 tips to cut your tax bill. Now, if you're only doing tax prep, uh, some of these steps are gonna be a little bit more difficult uh, than, than the others, but if you're interested in tax planning, I'm gonna give you some tips to maneuver to slash you what you owe to the IRS. 10 simple maneuvers to slash what you owe to the IRS. Let's get after number one. Number one, state taxes. Okay, that's property taxes or and more importantly, um, if you own a home or if you're renting, uh, there's business office deductions. Now, uh, everyone knows that as of right now, uh, with the new Tax Cuts and Job Act of 2017, uh, you're limited on how much you can deduct off your taxes you're capped at $10,000. Uh, most people didn't know that, most of you didn't think about that, uh, but you're capped at $10,000. Now, if you have a home office, meaning you have a business and you're running that business from your home office, all right, there's more things that you can write off on your taxes. So take that in consideration. What are those things? What are those things that you can start writing off right now to decrease your taxes? Number two, home equity line of credit, right? Before 2017, home equity line of credit, that's one of the main reasons why people wanted to purchase a house, right? They'll purchase their house, they'll accumulate equity, and after they accumulate their equity, they'll pull that equity out of their house or take a loan against that equity of that house or of that property or whatever properties that they have. And they can use it for all kinds of things, pay down debt, you know, maximize their living situation, or even pay off college debt. Guess what? Can't do that anymore. I hate to be a spoiler uh, or a spoiler alert, but you can't use your home equity line of credit as a write-off for any of those items. Now, if you are renovating your home, that is a tax deductible item, right? That is a tax deductible item, which leads us to number three. Number three, uh, problems with doubling of the standard deduction. That's a huge issue um, that uh, I see a lot of clients have. And look, I, I, I'll give you a, an example, okay? Uh, imagine if you're one of the folks uh, that are, are donating to nonprofit organizations, tithing or offering, uh, you're doing your 10%. Uh, 
uh, and only to find out at the end of the year, all of your deductions are gone. Why is that happening? How is that happening? Well, you got to understand, prior to the new tax laws that are in place right now, um, about a third of taxpayers were itemizing their taxes, right? They're itemizing their taxes. When the new laws are put into place, it dropped down to about 10% of people itemizing their, uh, their taxes. So what's that mean? Everybody's taking the standard deduction as they were before. They were taking a standard deduction, not really thinking about itemizations. Well, when you are not itemizing in the new taxes and the new tax laws right now, you're unable to get that deduction. So you got to make sure that you're itemizing. Now, uh, for some people, if you give a certain amount every single year, definitely, definitely what I'm saying right now for those folks who are currently retired, uh, let's say your age, uh, you know, 65 and older, definitely age 72, you're paying RMDs. What you can do to minimize your taxes is you can open up a QCD fund, a QCD fund, uh, where those are qualified donations set up inside of a fund. So let's say you donate $10,000 thousand dollars a year to whatever charity you like okay uh what if you say you know what ten thousand a year times five that's fifty thousand i'll take fifty thousand right now put inside this account and that right there can immediately help reduce your taxes right uh if you need help planning that out definitely reach out uh to us or somebody who's capable of directing you to those things uh but that leads us to number four if you are a business and you're used to writing off, uh, taking your clients out, there's a few sticky topics that you, you gotta make sure that you steer clear of and keep out of the eyes of the IRS. And one of those things are business vers uh, uh, entertainment versus business meals. So if you if you are entertaining a client, and you wanna take that client out to a ball game, let's say, and you pay for their ticket to get into the ball game. Well, you can't, write that off on your taxes. But if that same client would like to get a hot dog, a nachos, uh, a Coke, some Skittles, you know, it's a client. They're gonna take advantage, right? <laughs> Don't worry, that right there, you can write off on your taxes. So just make sure that you have two separate receipts, uh, which brings us to number five. Number five, can you believe that as of 2020, there are millions of Americans that have not tweaked their W-4? The tax laws have changed, but they have not tweaked their W-4s. What is going on? I don't know. Uh, folks, tweak your W-4s. Make sure that is right for you. Which brings us to number six. Folks, you got to be stashing your money in 403Bs, 401Ks, 457s, IRAs, retirement accounts. Those retirement accounts, the, more, the money that you put in there, you get to deduct from your income. Right. Many Americans right now have on average about seven thousand dollars saved for retirement. So, guys, we got to get after that. Got to get on top of that. Start stashing that money and get the tax deduction at the same time. Numbers, which brings us to number seven. Make yourself eligible for the earned income credit. Yes, I said make yourself eligible. That comes with planning. Make yourself eligible for the earned income credit. Now, if you are a retiree, what am I talking about? Well, I tell my clients, look, I want you poor on paper, but I want you wealthy in life. I want you poor on paper, but wealthy in life. Okay? So if you can plan it out how you're going to appear to the IRS to be poor on paper, right? Then if you're making up under $55,000 of income a year, you can get the earned income credit. That's 6,600 bucks. It's up to 6,600 bucks right now that you can have re to reduce your annual tax bill, uh, which brings us to number eight. All right, folks, I call this the super Roth. It's one of my favorite items that I like explaining to many of my clients. It's called the super Roth. Da da da! A HSA account, health savings account. Health savings account, health savings account, health savings account. What is a health savings account? So essentially, um, if you are receiving health care from your employer or you're doing something on the side uh, and you have a high deductible plan, you can get yourself an HSA account. And right now you can stash up to $8,100 annually inside your HSA account. So 
by putting money inside your HSA account, it's tax deductible, it's tax deductible, right? So what I tell my clients is when it's time for you to go and pay co-pays, get prescriptions, you know, get things from the pharmacy, get those band-aids, I'm telling folks, look, pay for that out of pocket. Pay for that out of pocket. Why am I saying that? Because it's tax deductible going in, but because you kept your receipts, because you uh, you know work with you know, your, your, your financial professional, you have a copy of all those receipts, you are able to write yourself a check at age 65 for those dollars. And don't forget, you can invest those dollars that are inside your HSA account. So when you go to pull money out of your HSA account, guess what? It's tax free because you got your receipts, right? Which brings us to number nine. Number nine, if you are in control of your income, if you can make yourself appear to be poor on paper, or if you're poor in real life, (laughs) you can sell stocks with zero tax on capital gains. So zero tax on capital gains. How about that one, right? If you can stay in control of your income, you can do this, which brings me to number 10. Number 10, out of the 10 simple maneuvers to slash what you owe to the IRS, number 10, I save that for the end. Why? Because many of you are looking to retire. Many of you are being forced into retirement. Many of you are going to retire because you're starting a business, but you are receiving Medicare, right? Medicare, 65 years old, you're still kicking. How do you minimize your taxes? Well, let's say you decided to quit work in the middle of the year. And your IRS showing is showing, uh, your IRS files is showing that you had a high income, right? But now you're not working anymore, so you're showing little to no income. Well, what you're allowed to do is submit form SSA-44 to Medicare, and you'll get your nice, beautiful letter in the mail saying, I'm so sorry, we see that your income has dropped. We're going to reduce your Medicare Part D premiums. Hey folks, thank you for being a part of this video uh, about learning 10 simple maneuvers that you can use right now to reduce what you owe to the IRS. Uh, If you like this video, please be sure to uh, like it and share it uh, uh, with others, you know, your friends, your family members, your community at large. Folks, as you were listening, there are probably some things uh, that you already knew. And then there were things you didn't know. You didn't. And then there were things you didn't know you didn't know, right? Uh, if you're in that category of people, please remember, reach out to us with your questions at 877-8-LASTER, option one, or you can meet us online uh, or go to lasterfinancial.com and schedule on that calendar. Guys, take care and be well. And remember, that though it may be hard, proper planning makes execution easier.